The Movies of 1961 1961 was as weird of a year for movies as it was for television. In comparison to some years before and after this, there wasn't nearly as much output. Some movies were extremely successful, but so many more were box office failures. Some of the movies that underperformed in 1961 would later become cult favorites or straight up classics. There didn't seem to be one genre of movie that stood out over the others. Just about every category had at least one notable hit. Except westerns. Westerns did terrible this year. Cowboys were just about played out, even on television. Traditional musicals were just about dead, with the strong exception of West Side Story, the biggest movie of the year. See how weird 1961 was for movies? Check these out. Elvis Movies Elvis had two movies this year, Wild in the Country and Blue Hawaii. The first one is a bomb, a rarity for Elvis. The second one is known, at least by name, to just about everyone who knows Elvis. It's one of his biggest box office successes. The soundtrack album was also extremely popular. Rock and Roll Movies Hey Let's Twist Joey D and the Starlighters were the headliners of this successful film that featured other big acts like Joanne Campbell, she was so awesome, and Teddy Randazzo. The success of this movie led to another Joey D movie the next year called Two Tickets to Paris. Teenage Millionaire This is a rare movie, but I'm not sure why. Jimmy Clanton was the star. It also featured such big acts as Dion, Jackie Wilson, Chubby Checker, Vicki Spencer, Bill Black's combo, and others. Legendary comedian Zazu Pitts was also in it. It deserves a watching for the name draw alone. Twist All Night, also known as the Continental Twist. Louis Prima and Sam Batera were the musical stars. Extremely popular model and actress June Wilkinson was also in it. Twist Around the Clock, a chubby checker movie. He certainly deserved one. He kickstarted the dance song craze of the early 1960s. This movie also featured Dion, Vicki Spencer, and the Marcells. It even had good character actors like Alvy Moore and Tall Avery. It made a lot of money and led to a sequel the next year, also starring Chubby Checker, called Don't Knock the Twist. The Young Ones, starring British rock stars Cliff Richard and the Shadows. Jerry Lewis Movies. The ladies' man marked the debut of his famous catchphrase, Hey, lady! His other movie this year was The Errand Boy. These were typical Jerry Lewis films that did well enough, but weren't super hits. Comic Adaptations Dondi Based on the comic strip of the same name, this live-action family comedy did poorly. Although David Corey, who played Dondi, was an unknown child actor, his GI buddy, Dealey, was played by David Jansen. Jansen had recently finished his popular TV series, Richard Diamond, Private Detective, but would become most famous for his next series, The Fugitive, in 1963. Tintin and the Golden Fleece This live-action movie, made in France, is based on the popular Tintin comic books from Belgium. Although better known in Europe, an English dubbed version exists. Tintin comics, cartoons, even movies eventually find their way to America. A less successful sequel was released in 1964. Other Comedy Movies The Absent-Minded Professor This major hit film starred Fred McMurray as the inventor of flying rubber, better known as Flubber. This became the very first Disney movie to get a sequel just two years later called Son of Flubber. Breakfast at Tiffany's. You still hear about this movie in one way or another. This romantic comedy starred Audrey Hepburn, George Pappard, Buddy Ebsen, and Mickey Rooney. It was a major moneymaker. 
Come September. This romantic comedy hit starred Rock Hudson, Gina Lola Brigida, Sandra D, and Bobby Darren. Gidget Goes Hawaiian. This is the popular sequel to the 1959 film Gidget. Deborah Wally now plays Gidget, replacing Sandra D. Like the previous movie, it's a beach comedy film with musical numbers. This kind of movie got even more popular when surf rock music started getting big. The Great Imposter Tony Curtis starred in this comedy drama about the real-life imposter Ferdinand de Mera, infamous for impersonating all kinds of people, just for kicks. This movie was a good enough moneymaker, but not one of Curtis's biggest films. However, Curtis claimed this to be his favorite role. Lover Come Back One of the classic romantic comedies with Rock Hudson, Doris Day, and Tony Randall. A hit. Mr. Topaz, also known as I Like Money in America. This movie was not a success. It stars Peter Sellers and was also his directorial debut. What is odd about this movie is that just two years later in 1963 he would hit big with the first Pink Panther film. Like that film, this film was set in France, he played a French character, and it was a crime caper. One of his co-stars was Herbert Lom, who would end up becoming the long-suffering Chief Inspector Dreyfus, beginning with the second Pink Panther movie. The biggest difference, however, is that Mr. Topaz was just not as endearing of a character as Inspector Clouseau. The Parent Trap This Disney comedy film was a huge, huge hit. Haley Mills played a dual role of identical twins separated at birth when their parents divorced. Maureen O'Hara and Brian Keith played the parents. Little known fact, these two were in another movie together in 1961, The Deadly Companions, a serious western. That didn't do anywhere near as well as The Parent Trap. The Pleasure of His Company A movie with singers and dancers that wasn't a musical, but straight comedy. And it was a hit. Fred Astaire had given up dancing on screen, as he felt he was getting too old. He did dance a little during the party sequence, and even sang for a little bit, but there were no musical numbers. Debbie Reynolds, Tab Hunter, and Lily Palmer were the other main stars along with Charlie Ruggles and Elvia Allman. Pocket Full of Miracles This starred Glenn Ford and Betty Davis with a large name cast including, but not limited to, Peter Falk, Anne Margaret, Edward Everett Horton, Sheldon Leonard, Ellen Corby, Jackie Lamb, Mike Mazurki, Doodles Weaver, George E. Stone, Jay Novello, and Benny Rubin. It made money, but wasn't a major hit. It was also nominated for a lot of awards. Snow White and the Three Stooges You probably know the basic story of the real Three Stooges. They were real famous for a long time, then they weren't, then they made a big comeback, then they all died off. Well, this movie was made during their big comeback. It was actually their second feature film. What happened with this movie? It flopped. Big time. It was their only feature that was filmed in color, but it was their least popular. Fortunately, this movie didn't kill their career. The Stooges still went on to make more movies. The biggest problem with this movie wasn't the quality, but the fact that too much money was put into it. Color cost a lot of money. The film was aimed at a children's audience. Kids paid less for movie tickets. Back then it would have taken over 15 million kids buying tickets to break even. In other words, the studio made a big oopsie. On the bright side, the Stooges finally got their big budget feature. Tammy Tell Me True The second movie in the Tammy series. Sandra D replaced Debbie Reynolds. This did well and it has a good cast of supporting actors. The Tammy movies are gentle comedies, certainly not in-your-face material. These are made to be easy to take. Adventure Movies Five Minutes to Live Country singer Johnny Cash is the star of this action crime thriller. 
he's the bad guy and he goes down hard. This movie was actually a big money making hit. Despite this, Johnny only acted in one other theatrical film. After this, he acted in several TV movies and did voiceover work. Goliath Against the Giants A Hercules type film, although the character was called Goliath. It was Brad Harris's debut as a lead actor. The Guns of Navarone This World War II war movie was a colossal success and starred Gregory Peck, David Niven, Anthony Quinn, and Richard Harris. Hercules and the Conquest of Atlantis One of the many Hercules movies made in the 60s. This starred bodybuilder Reg Park in his film debut. Hercules and the Haunted World Reg Park stars as Hercules. Christopher Lee plays his nemesis, an evil king. The Naked Edge Gary Cooper starred in this thriller movie, his final role. It was released after his death. It was a big hit. It also starred Deborah Kerr and Peter Cushing. Yo Jimbo This Japanese samurai film was made by Toho Productions, the same company famous for Godzilla. It was a critical and commercial success. A lot of films from all over the world have gone to use this film's basic story idea of an anti-hero pitting two criminal gangs against each other. Some critics say this is one of the greatest films ever made. It does have American fans, but this never became an American mainstream film. The heavily borrowed premise, however, should be very familiar to you. Westerns Westerns didn't do very well this year. There were a lot of big budget westerns with big name stars that bombed. It was clear that the era of Hollywood producing a ton of mainstream western movies was coming to a close. Since the mid-1960s, Hollywood occasionally comes out with a big western, but, for the most part, this genre has been relegated to B-productions from independent studios. It is unnecessary to list all of the Western movies this year, but here are some that didn't make it and I bet you'll be surprised. The Misfits This movie, by name power alone, should not have been a bomb, but it was. It was a modern day Western with Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe as the leads. It was the last completed film for both of them. The film was released after Gable's death, but before Monroe's. Even with that fact, it hasn't helped the movie become better known to audiences today. The only thing that has come from it is more favorable reception from critics who dub it a masterpiece and one of the best films of the 60s. This movie also had other big name actors like Montgomery Clift, Eli Wallach, Kevin McCarthy, and old cowboy star Rex Bell in a cameo, just to name a few. The Last Sunset Rock Hudson and Kirk Douglas starred in this western bomb. One-Eyed Jacks Marlon Brando was the star of this western. It was also the only film he directed. This was a big bomb, despite having a very big cast including Carl Malden, Ben Johnson, Slim Pickens, Alicia Cook Jr., among others. It fell into the public domain and seems to be better liked today than it was back then, but it's still not a very famous film. Posse from Hell A little remembered western movie, but I'm not sure why. It had a lot of big name talent in it including Audie Murphy, John Saxon, Vic Morrow, Royal Dano, Lee Van Cleef, Harry Lauder, and Alan Lane, cowboy star and the voice of Mr. Ed himself. Plus, you would think the title of the movie would draw people in. Still, this remains an obscurity. Two rode together. John Ford was the director, famous for his John Wayne westerns. James Stewart was the star, along with Richard Widmark and Shirley Jones. It even had legendary western funny man Andy Devine. Other stars included Ken Curtis, Jeanette Nolan, Woody Strode, and Ted Knight. This movie bombed so hard. The names on the poster should have been enough to sell this to ticket buyers, but it didn't. Horror and Science Fiction Movies The Beast of Yucca Flats Famous bad guy actor Tor Johnson starred as The Beast. This is considered to be one of the very worst movies ever made. It was extremely low budget. 
was not a great hit at the time, but it has since become somewhat famous in spite of itself due to all those people who watch those So Bad They're Good movies. The Curse of the Werewolf Hammer Films from England tried their hand at modernizing the Wolfman type films. They had previous success with Frankenstein, Dracula, and The Mummy. For whatever reason, this movie was not as successful as those. It's not even particularly hated by audiences. This just seems to be one of those movies that fell through the cracks. Gorgo This is a British made Godzilla type film. It's actually a smart monster movie with a good story and good acting. It did well enough in theaters and became a big comic book series for the Charlton publisher that ran from 1961 to 65. The comics, likewise, are quite clever. Conga I'm surprised the makers of this film could get away with doing this. It's a ripoff of King Kong, simply renamed Conga. The story is different, so it's not a remake, but just the same, it's a thinly veiled copy of King Kong. It was popular enough to get a comic book series from the Charlton publisher that lasted from this year until 1965, with reprints continuing until 1968. Master of the World Based on the awesome story by Jules Verne. It wasn't the most faithful adaptation as it took elements from that book and an earlier Jules Verne novel, mashed them together, and did some other retweaks besides. It had to be made less fantastic than the book itself due to budget and technological limitations. In 1961, it really wasn't possible to make a realistic, convincing adaptation of the original story. The basic idea of the movie's plot is that a madman inventor named Robert has made an incredible airship in a bid for world domination. Vincent Price was the villain, reportedly one of his favorite roles. It was also the first time Charles Bronson was cast as the romantic, heroic leading man of a theatrical film. This did well enough and the sequel was valued, but they basically wrote themselves in a corner with the way this film story was constructed, so it didn't happen. Mothra, the first film of the famous monster moth. He eventually became a big character in the Godzilla movies. After Toho's first two Godzilla movies, the company wanted to branch off into other monster movies. Mothra proved to be popular, second in popularity only to Godzilla. The unique thing about Mothra is that the character was always presented as good. Mysterious Island Based loosely on the Jules Verne novel, this science fiction adventure movie had its fans. The story is a sequel to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Unlike the 1954 film that Disney made, this film was made by Ameren Films for Columbia Pictures. A group of prisoners in the American Civil War escape in a hot air balloon. They end up on a mysterious island populated by giant and tiny animals. Still, the men don't think they're the only people on the island. Eventually, they learn that Captain Nemo, in his fantastic submarine the Nautilus, has been hiding out on the island. He helps the men escape the island, as a volcano is about to destroy it. Nemo, however, stays behind as the Nautilus is damaged beyond repair and he doesn't want to leave. The Pit and the Pendulum Based loosely on the Edgar Allan Poe story, this successful B-movie starred Vincent Price and Barbara Steele. This did so well that American International Pictures and producer Roger Corman agreed to do another six movies based on Edgar Allan Poe stories. Five of these would again star Vincent Price. These movies, more than anything else, kept the stories of Edgar Allan Poe in public memory during the 1960s. Reptilicus a Danish-American joint production about a giant prehistoric reptile. It actually did well at the box office and got a comic book series from the Charlton publisher. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea This science fiction adventure film was a major hit. It featured a large ensemble cast and involved a nuclear submarine going deep into the ocean in a bid to save the world from disaster. Danger lurks inside and outside the sub. The cast includes Walter Pidgeon, Joan Fontaine, Barbara Eden, Peter Lorre, Robert Sterling, Michael Ansara, Frankie Avalon, Howard McNear, and Robert Easton, among others. 
The success of this film would lead to a popular TV series that ran from 1964 to 68. Drama and Romance Movies Backstreet This did well in theaters, but is little remembered today. It starred Susan Hayward and John Gavin. This is some sordid soap opera stuff, but nothing as edgy as Peyton Place. Just a standard drama movie. El Seed. This was huge. It seems to be largely ignored today, but it made lots and lots of money at the time. This starred Charlton Heston and Sophia Loren. It was an epic historical drama based loosely on the life of El Cid himself, a warlord in medieval Spain. Fanny. This romantic drama film was a big hit and starred Leslie Caron, Charles Boyer, and Maurice Chevalier. The George Raft Story. This biopic about the famous actor George Raft starred Ray Danton. It was a largely fictionalized account of the actor's messed up life with only kernels of truth. Jane Mansfield was the leading lady. It also starred Julie London, Frank Gorshin, Barbara Nichols, Jack Albertson, and Neville Brand as Al Capone. George Raft himself lived another 19 years after this movie was released. This movie is mocked heavily for its falsehoods, but still has an audience. It was even referenced on an episode of The Andy Griffith Show. The Hustler This romantic sports drama about pool hustling was a major hit. Jackie Gleason, who was already a superstar, became even more famous with his role of Minnesota Fats. Gleason played a lot of memorable characters, and Minnesota Fats ranks right up there with Ralph Cramden, Joe the Bartender, and Smokey. Judgment at Nuremberg, a courtroom drama that had a large ensemble cast of big-name actors and was a major moneymaker at the box office. La Dolce Vita This Italian film was originally released in 1960 and became a smash success all over Europe. It wasn't released in America until 1961, but became a hit over there too. It made a name out of director Federico Fellini and a major international sex symbol of Anita Ekberg, although she had been around for almost a decade. It's a comedy satire and drama. It was also deemed controversial, especially by the Catholic Church. King of Kings Jesus Becomes a Movie Star Jeffrey Hunter plays Jesus in this telling of his life story. It was a major hit. Parish This drama film, centered around tobacco growers, was actually a big commercial success, but it's just not that celebrated. It had a big name cast including Troy Donahue, Claudette Colbert, Carl Malden, Dean Jagger, Connie Stevens, Diane McBain, Dub Taylor, Hayden Rourke, and Carol O'Connor. Donahue at one time said it was his favorite role. A Raisin in the Sun Sidney Poitier starred in this drama about black life that initially bombed in theaters, but gained a following after the fact and is now considered a classic. Return to Peyton Place The successful sequel to the earlier film Peyton Place. This made a lot of money, but nowhere near as much as the 1957 original. Anyone who knows what Peyton Place is will tell you it was one big messed up soap opera. Over the top drama to the max. Splendor in the Grass This drama film, set in the late 1920s to early 1930s, starred Natalie Wood and Warren Beatty. It was a big hit. Susan Slade This teen drama starred Connie Stevens and Troy Donahue. It was financially successful, but quickly forgotten. Town Without Pity This movie, set in 1960 occupied Germany, starred Kirk Douglas and was not a great success. However, the title song from the soundtrack, recorded by Gene Pitney, became a huge hit. It was nominated for an Academy Award and became Pitney's first top 40 hit. This is one of those rare instances where the song from a film is more popular than anything else about the film. You've probably been a fan of this song for years and never knew it came from a movie. Musicals Babes in Toyland Disney's version of the classic operetta was a flop. 
It's not remembered as well as the 1934 film with Laurel and Hardy. It was only the second theatrical version, but three TV adaptations had been made between the two movies. This film bears little resemblance to the Laurel and Hardy movie. It starred Ray Bolger, Tommy Sands, Annette Funicello, and Ed Wynn. This was Funicello's favorite filmmaking experience, despite the fact that it didn't do well. The toy soldiers from this movie, however, became quite iconic for Disney during the company's holiday promotions. They just looked kind of cool. Flower Drum Song At the time of this film's release, it did poorly at the box office. It is the only Hollywood movie based on a Rodgers and Hammerstein musical to lose money. It was, however, nominated for many awards, and a lot of people came to enjoy this movie later on. It's still a well-liked musical. It was the first Hollywood movie to star a mostly Asian cast. This wouldn't happen again until The Joy Luck Club in 1993, 32 years later. West Side Story This musical drama film was an inner-city version of Romeo and Juliet, with whites and Puerto Ricans fighting each other. Natalie Wood was the big star. Rita Moreno received a lot of attention for her part in the film. This made an insane amount of money and was the biggest hit of the year. Film Debuts of 1961 Film debuts of actors and actresses aren't always memorable, but the ones who came out this year enjoyed very long, successful careers. Anne Margaret as Louise in A Pocket Full of Miracles this was actually a decent part for a first-time film gig. She played the illegitimate daughter of Betty Davis, who starred as an apple peddler named Apple Annie. Ed Asner had been doing small parts on TV for a while before he made his film debut as Dave Keller in The Murder Men. This wasn't a big movie, but it had name actors in the lead roles including Peter Mark Richmond, James Coburn, and Dorothy Dandridge. Interesting enough, this was Ed Asner's first film, and Dorothy Dandridge's last. Warren Beatty as Bud Stamper in Splendor in the Grass If your first film role is the male lead opposite Natalie Wood, you're doing pretty good as an actor. He had been acting on TV since 1957, but this film broke him out as a name actor. By the late 1960s, he was an established superstar. Jack Cassidy as Gareth Lowell in Look in Any Window. This was a small part in a weird drama movie. He did more films, but was more famous for his TV and Broadway performances. John Davis Chandler as Mad Dog Cole in Mad Dog Cole. His first film was the leading role of a biopic about the real-life mob hitman. The movie was heavily fictionalized, and it wasn't a great hit but it set his career in motion. He did a lot of bit parts after this, but he was always working until his retirement in 1995. Mad Dog Cole was also the first film for Gene Hackman, who played a policeman in an uncredited role. He also made his television debut this year. Gene Hackman was one of those actors who was largely unnoticed until he first became noticed, and then BAM! Instant legend. Talking about big stars, Mad Dog Cole was also the first film for Telly Savalas, who played Lieutenant Darrow. Savalas had been acting on TV since 1959. He continued to play a lot of supporting roles in TV and movies until 1973 when he struck it big with the TV series Kojak. Louis Gossett Jr. as George Murchison in A Raisin in the Sun. To me, at least, Louis Gossett Jr. seemed like more of an 80s and 90s actor but he got his start way back in 1961. The movie failed at the box office, but became a classic in the years since. To have your first part in a movie that people still talk about so many years later is a great achievement as an actor. George Kennedy as Nathan Dillon in The Little Shepherd of Kingdom Come. Kennedy had been acting on TV since 1956, most notably as the recurring character of military policeman Sergeant Kennedy on Sergeant Bilko. Little Shepherd was a Western movie that went largely unnoticed, but Kennedy kept getting bigger parts in bigger movies. He remained a big-name actor until his final film in 2014. Harvey Corman as Ken Carter in Living Venus 
This exploitation film was inspired by Hugh Hefner, the real-life founder of Playboy magazine. Corman played the second lead of the film, a photographer. Technically, Corman's first film appearance was in a 1959 industrial short called Carving Magic, but this was his first part in an actual film. His breakout role was as a regular on the Danny Kaye Show variety program from 1963 to 67. After that, he got real famous as a player on the Carol Burnett Show from 1967 to 77. He basically remained a character actor until Carol Burnett, but after that he was a highly sought after featured performer. If you had a movie or TV show and you could get Harvey Corman to make an appearance, it was a good thing. He rarely got leading roles but people looked forward to seeing him in an ensemble cast. Dudley Moore as piano player in The Third Alibi. This was an uncredited role in a British thriller film. He became so popular later on, it's hard to believe he had such a minuscule part in such a little-known movie. Hey, he had to start somewhere. Joe Pesci as dancer at the Peppermint Lounge in Hey, Let's Twist a movie featuring Joey D and the Starlighters. This was an uncredited part. Joe Pesci traveled a long road to fame. In the early 1960s, he worked as a barber while trying to start a musical career. He played guitar with several bands, including Joey D and the Starlighters. His first album was in 1968, and he went by the name of Joe Ritchie. The album was covers of popular songs and didn't sell fantastic. From 1970 to 76, he was part of a stand-up comedy duo with Frank Vincent, another actor you wouldn't guess was a stand-up comedian. Pesci's next film was a low-budget crime thriller in 1976 called The Death Collector. After that, he lived above an Italian restaurant where he was an employee. In 1979, director Martin Scorsese noticed Pesci's performance in The Death Collector and wanted him for a role in the now-famous movie Raging Bull. That movie was released in 1980 and really kick-started Pesci's career as an actor. He became known for playing volatile bad guys or volatile funny men. Either way, Pesci's characters often had anger issues. His real big breakout came with the Lethal Weapon movies as comedy sidekick Leo Getz. He first appeared in Lethal Weapon 2 from 1989 and was in all the remaining movies. From 1989 onward, he just kept getting bigger parts in more good movies. Burt Reynolds as Hoke Adams in Angel Baby. For the major superstar Burt Reynolds became, he didn't enjoy a quick rise to fame. He started acting on TV in 1958. This first movie part was a significant supporting role. Still, it took until 1972 with the hit movie Deliverance before Burt Reynolds enjoyed his breakout role. His biggest all-time hit was Smokey and the Bandit in 1977. After that, Burt Reynolds always remained a big name, even if some of his movies weren't so hot. George Siegel as Dr. Howard in The Young Doctors. This was a small part in an obscure movie that, strange enough, featured a lot of big name actors. Siegel's career took a long time to take off, despite the fact that he always worked and people really liked his performances. His first real breakout role was in the 1966 film Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? a super success in theaters that got him nominated for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. After that, he started getting lead roles. The 60s and 70s were his decades. He always worked after that, but good roles were few and far between. The 1990s were kinder to him. He had a major role in the sitcom Just Shoot Me from 1997 to 2003. He continued to work after that, but his next major success was as Albert Pop Solomon, the grandpa on the sitcom The Goldbergs from 2013 until his death in 2021. I know George did a lot of good stuff, but I still like his role in The Goldbergs the best. It was a well-played character on a well-done show, and if you see the show, he's definitely going to do something that will make you laugh. <laughs>